So definitely a big symbolic move, uh, but it's a, it's a big runway and pathway ahead in the sense like uh, uh, it's been a very cautious exit. Uh, we should have we thought that it should have happened earlier, but but finally we are here. Uh, but the signals are uh, very cautious and there's no clear runway in terms of, you know, is this a sustained rise in interest rates? What is the appropriate level or target interest rate uh, BOJ will be looking at? And a lot will depend on, on the inflation dynamics. But inflation dynamics in, the, in Japan are here to stay. And, and I think the real test will come in if Fed's, uh, Fed doesn't cut rates. Yeah. Because the Fed is important here, an elephant in the room for Bank of Japan as well. Yeah, I, I mean, they, they speak about perhaps not rushing in, 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 in a sense on trying to normalize things out here. But what does this do, do you think, overall for things like the yen, if you're, if you're looking to get in on yen, for example? I mean, it doesn't look like they're looking to shore that up and, and strengthen it. Yes, so uh, we'll see. Uh, obviously, we crossed 150 today. Uh, I think all, all eyes will be on the Ministry of Finance now uh, because we saw this level being uh, critical in the past. Uh, but uh, I think yen's role has changed. So historically, we used to uh, view yen as a risk-off currency, but it hasn't played that role because inflation has been higher. Uh, but if there's a growth shock, so from a portfolio design perspective, if there's a growth shock, yen may play that role again. But right now, obviously, the risk is stickier inflation, you know, further delays to the Fed hikes. So I think yen is obviously not getting the full support from BOJ, while on the other side, the other key central banks are not, uh, you know, ready to cut as yet, even though they are signaling, but they're not ready to cut as, as, uh, as yet. I started at the show just talking about the comparison between European banks and Japanese ones, and we've been through this cycle where we've seen a genuine change in profitability around the NIM story for the European banks. Is it the similar story now for Japan? We're at the early stage of that journey, and NIMs could only expand from here, and therefore there's value in some of these names that have all traded very consistently in a range from Mitsubishi UFJ to Sumitomo Mitsui, Mizuho Bank, uh, Rizona Holdings, all up roughly about 20% over the past year or so. So is there more in this story or is it already baked, baked into the price now? I think I would say structurally Japan is underweight, so the demand for Japanese assets is likely to rise, especially equities. And they have done a lot of corporate reforms. Uh, the dividend story is coming back. Net issuance has turned negative, which means that buybacks, net buybacks are becoming more powerful. And, and on, on, on Karen, you raise an important point. Obviously, the NIM story has been very important for Europe. Uh, but Japan is, I think, further behind the journey. So it can be a multi-year journey. But, it, uh, but the risk is that it doesn't get disrupted by a proper slowdown. Inflation, you know, is obviously those kind of standard risks of downside risk to inflation going forward. But it doesn't seem to be the case. Uh, but overall, underweight in Japan uh, is, is a huge, uh, uh, you know, a it's a big fact. And it will, uh, it will start to move in the, in the direction we are seeing, which is people going back and getting interest. In fact, in our franchises, the, the strongest interest we see is in Japanese equities right now. That's